Thanks. I want to talk a little bit. Um, I was originally going to talk about memory error handling, but a few topics have come up already in the memory management sessions, which kind of overlap with an issue that I'm currently having with huge TLB PMD sharing. Um, and I put up there that, yeah, this technology is almost 16 years young. Um, so it's not really something that we would normally talk about in LSFMM. But it wasn't something that I was actually aware of until I started looking deeply into the huge TLB code. Um, so just as a brief, very brief overview, processes can share PMD pages if they do huge TLB shared mappings. And as I said, we actually share an entire PMD range, which means that that's PUD, a PUD size sharing, which is usually you know one gigabyte on x86. And one of the reasons for doing this, um, it wasn't really explicitly the reason that it was originally done, is memory savings. And one of the examples that our database group likes to give is you know a one terabyte shared mapping. They have 10,000 processes sharing um, that mapping. Um, if you do the math, it comes out to about 39 gig worth of memory savings if you do PMD sharing. So just at a very high level, this is only a four level uh, page table, but this is kind of what it looks like. You have process A, process B. Um, they both point to the same PMD page and, and that's where the actual data pages um, get addressed. So you set up sharing like this, but there's also this routine called huge PMD unshare. And what happens is, is that um, whenever you change the attributes, like do an mProtect read only um, on a mapping or a range of a mapping, we have to unshare um, that shared mapping. And so what happens is, is that we actually clear the PMD pointer in the PUD. So we effectively unmap a PUD size area. And this happens, like I say, whenever you change protection, you do truncation on a file or a whole bunch of file, or maybe, you know, the file just gets on, a page gets unmapped in that shared section for migration. And so when we call huge PMD on share, it has to hold the page table lock. That seems kind of obvious since it's messing with the page table. And it also has to uh, hold the IMMAP SEMA. And what that is, is just um, the sharing is keyed off of the ref count of the PMD page itself. So that's kind of a very brief overview on huge PMD sharing. So a couple of years ago, I stumbled upon this kind of very ugly race in the code. Um, and what happens is, is that usually during a page fault or various other places, um, you will look up, do a page table walk to get a pointer to a PTE and, or maybe even just do in the page fault code, allocate a PTE, you'll get a pointer to that thing. But the problem is, is, is that another thread could theoretically at the same time be doing a huge PMD on share, which means that that PTE pointer that you just looked up or that, you know, PTE that you just allocated, that is no longer valid. Um, it could more than likely point to um, the page table of a process that you were sharing with, or worse yet, I guess it could even theoretically be unallocated and point way off somewhere else. Um, so using that PTE pointer, even to do a page table lock, because it is kind of what you key off of to get the page table lock, that's invalid. Certainly writing um, to that PTE at that location is invalid. So that looked really scary to me. And once I knew that that was actually possible, it wasn't too hard to write user space code to actually hit that race condition. So that scared the heck out of me a couple of years ago and resulted in this commit that's upstream today. And 
what this commit does is it actually uses the IMAP SEMA for synchronization. So as I mentioned earlier, you have to hold that uh, semaphore in write mode when you're doing an on-share operation. So my thought was, and this is what is in the code today, is, is that we hold that same semaphore in read mode during fault processing, or any time that we have to look up, uh, do a page table walk, and look up and get uh, the address of a PTE pointer and use that for some purpose, you know, writing to it or doing something with that. So the good thing about that is, is that faults can run in parallel. Um, the huge PMD on share is blocked during faults because it does require write mode and all is safe, but the problem is, is that that, uh, that IMAP SEMA is held for the duration of truncate, hole punch, um, but maybe even more importantly, unmap operations. So that can cause quite large um, delays in fault processing. And even more significantly, I think, is, is that you know, process X, which is unmapping the shared area, can cause delays in processes Y page fault handling. So this was actually pointed out by uh, on the mail list not too long ago. And I thought, well, how bad can this really get? So I took a test system with 48 CPUs, uh, 320 gig of memory, and just have a very simple process that does in an infinite loop, it M maps a 250 gig file, a shared mapping, faults in all of the pages and unmaps it. Um, have 48 instances of that running um, all in parallel and run that and see, well, what would be my worst um, latencies for faults out there? And as you can see from this slide, um, running that for a couple of hours, I end up a worst case of over a two second latency during fault processing waiting for um, that IMF SEMA lock. So not really uh, pretty. Um, I, I started talking about different ways to address this upstream. Um, the only feedback that I got from was from David. And I think David said, well, let's just dis disable huge PMD sharing, which um, some people uh, may not uh, really agree with. So the, the approach that I've come up with is something that was actually discussed a little bit when we were talking, um, when Liam and Matthew were talking about uh, MMAP SEMA, some more scalability there. And so what I'm doing and is actually have some patches prepared to do is actually revert um, that patch that uses IMAP SEMA for the synchronization. And, um, this may sound familiar to that talk, is actually add a per VMA um, semaphore for this PMD synchronization. And this would be huge TLB specific. I would hang it off of the uh, VM private data field. So it's, it's not nothing that would be added to uh, VM struct itself and only added to VMAs that are capable of sharing. And just like um, how IMF SEMA is used today in upstream code. It's held in read mode for faults and write mode when uh, calling huge PMD on share. The good thing about this is it actually limits the scope of contention um, in some respects. Still things like truncate, hole punch, they can be done by anyone and, and migrate as well. But when you do an unmap, it's only, you can only block threads in the same process, in the same uh, MM struct, the same address space. So just some quick um, comparisons as far as that same uh, benchmark test suite. Um, if you'll notice here, our maximum fault wait time goes down from, you know, two seconds to, I don't know, a little bit uh, over a tenth of a second here. Um, 
our overall wait time isn't significantly less, but um, our worst case seems to be quite a bit better. So I was just curious about um, thoughts on this approach. Um, I know that during David's talk about page table reclamation, um, the whole issue of trying to keep page table pointers stable while you're doing something like a page fault has to be addressed with. I haven't looked at that series, but it seems like they're using, you know, sequence counts or something like that to uh, keep that data stable. Um, that may be overkill for this here. I, I don't know. Just wanted to get some additional thoughts on this. No thoughts? There's a lot of eye rolling in the room, Mike. I think you've broken a lot of people's brains here. <laughs> I think Liam's hyperventilating, in fact. There's one, one more kind of interesting data point here is, is that, um, you know, the upstream complaint was about this maximum fault wait time, or actually they weren't complaining about a specific number, but um, it was another database vendor who was using huge TLB um, for shared data. And um, they just noticed latencies went up when they uh, went with a more modern kernel. So I'm, I'm thinking it's one with uh, that new change in locking. So I went back to see, well, how bad um, or how good was the scalability originally? And I, I just put this together last night, so I'm not 100% confident in the numbers, but um, if I just revert that and go back to the, we're not safe, we're, um, you know, we could potentially corrupt data. Um, the interesting thing is, is that the maximum latency during fault is even worse than it is today. Um, but the very interesting thing is, is that we actually wait, um, we're stalled in fault processing, you know, quite a few times less, uh, basically every, you know, almost every time, um, you know, we're talking, you know, two, a hundred thousand, you know, times more in the, uh, the code that is today as opposed to the original. So I, I don't think, you know, I still think we have the potential for, you know, we had the potential for these very long fault delays in the original code. It's just that we had less opportunity to actually um, wait. And, and, that, and that can be explained just because of the area of the locking. We only did that um, when actually doing a PMD alloc and notic and notif notif noticing that there were that there was not a PMD page there and then had to actually uh, kick in the locking to to set that up. So that's all that I had. Like I said, I was hoping for a little bit of comment. Um, when David said tear out the huge PMD sharing, I said, well, okay, we'll just use M share instead of that. But um, after this morning's session, I don't think that's going in next week or anything. So what, what type of lock did you put in? Excuse me? What type of lock did you put in? And where did it, where did it live again? So what I did, so this, Liam, this kind of, uh, it sparked my interest during the, the talk about the uh, MF semis scaling that uh, you had earlier, maybe on uh, Monday. Yeah. So I actually added a per VMA lock. What type of a lock? It's just a read writer semaphore. RW sem um, yeah, those will spin though. Um, we're, our, we were thinking of an, an inv uh,
Yeah, we, we're thinking of flag or something for in, uh, not invalid, uh, inactive. Whoa. Well, that just. <laughs> so we, we were thinking uh, of putting some sort of flag in to show that it was in, in uh, what was in the middle of a, uh, an operation. So if you did that, it might actually, is he gone? Okay. I'm here. Um, yeah. Sorry, the screen went blank. Sorry. Um, so we were thinking of putting in a flag that would um, uh, show that there was some sort of activity on the VMA and you would restart your try for anything else. Um, if, if you use an RW SIM, I think those things will spin uh, and it will spin if there's any activity. So if there's any activity, in fact, it will get worse. So it, it might be, you might be hitting that, that making, um, affecting your result in a negative way. Uh, you might have better luck with a different type of lock, locking strategy. I, I don't know if it's a different lock. I've got my own. <laughs> I don't know if it's a, a diff I, I mean, it's, it's the right lock to use. If, if the RWSM implementation is bad, then it needs to get fixed. Well, uh, it's it's not bad. It exists for for a reason. It's just not for this. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I think the way you're using it's fine. Uh, my my point, the point I wanted to make was that um, I kind of cringed a little bit when I saw, oh yeah, we do huge PMD unshare when you do mprotex, because I got thinking, hang on a minute, the database people have said to me that what they really want is for mprotex to affect every process that is accessing the database. Um, is, is, is it simply Yeah, that that's what they want. They don't have that with uh, huge PMD sharing. So if, 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 if we had the magic flag that we talked about in the earlier session that said, no, really, I want you to share the page tables, I want you to share the mprotex information, I want you to share all, everything as if things were multi-threaded, um, but they're not for reasons, um, how much of this problem goes away? Yeah, I think most of it would. Um, that's, of course, without looking at all the details. And I think um, the suggestion was is to actually yeah, store or somehow reference those page tables based upon your sharing object, like the iNode or something, correct? Yeah. So if we move to the maple tree model that we discussed yesterday where we have a flag in each VMA and you just use that, uh, would that work, Willie? Well, because this is transparent, we still have to have user space opt into, opt into it because we, 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 we can't just say, oh yeah, we transparently shared the page tables and now mprotect affects everyone who has an mmap without everyone who has an mmap opting into believing in that model. No. Uh, no, I mean, if we keep it the way it is and Mike's mm. solution gets uh, changed to use the uh, RCU way of, of reading things and, and, and inactive flagging this particular special VMA. I'm not sure, I can't picture it off the top of my head. I need to think about that for a bit yeah. longer. <laughs> Too many moving parts. Seriously. So is, is David in the room? I mean, one of the things that, like I say, I, I haven't looked at those patches yet, but so is it sequence counting that um, is used to keep the page table in a stable state while somebody else could be reclaiming or removing part of it? So it's, it's not really for, uh, for so when I was talking about the sequence lock, the sequence lock is only used to synchronize, for example, in our um, in uh, our fork code against our get user pages code, and it's 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 not for synchronizing any kind of page table activity. It's just to to tell somebody who operates on the on the page tables to try again, like to undo whatever you did, try again. There there was something in between. Uh, for page tables, uh, especially on the good, good fast code. Uh, we actually use, I think there are like the two variants, either via RCU or via, um, via TLB flush, where you can synchronize against that. So what you would do is, um, after you, you performed your changes, um, for example, if you would want to rip out a page table, you would um, 
rip out a page table, not free it yet, you would do a TLB flush and then you can free it deferred because then you know, like, for example, good paths is no longer walking over it. Um, if you need something similar, it, the question would be like, can you also defer, for example, some kind of freeing uh, after that? Um, but I mean, the sequence count could eventually work just to tell whatever was walking and doing stuff to try again because something changed. But like the, the problem of uh, access after free is, is, is a different story. The sequence count is really just to tell somebody to try again uh, because something changed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there, I may be able to do that with a, a, some kind of a sequence count as well. Like, uh, like what happens actually, like if the, if the last user of a shared PMD goes away, because like uh, the last one called PMD unshared, will the page tables then get freed or how, how exactly does that work? Well, it, it's actually when the second to the last user um, goes away, then basically it looks like just one person with their normal page table set up. That's interesting, okay. So um, my gut feeling is that maybe good pass code isn't probably synchronized with that and we might have some weird issues already. <laughs> that, that, that's my gut feeling, uh, but we, we should look into that. Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll have to look into the details, but maybe reusing even the same sequence count or something like that could, could already work and fix some other unexpected cases. Um, yeah. Okay, well, that's all I have, but uh, I'm gonna probably send out uh, this VMA locking as another RFC. Um, just to see what people think about it. So thank you.